hope you're all doing fine. We are here in University of Houston in front of the E. Cullen building and I'm about to talk to you about two beautiful artworks that, I he that are here by my side. I am Lisa Cortano, I'm a student of the MA in Arts Leadership and I'm here presenting you two artworks that are part of the temporary exhibition it's gonna be here till the end of May and it was brought to you by Public Art UHS. So first I wanna to talk to you a little bit uh, about what color field is. So color field is a style that started in the late 1940s in New York. Now, uh, the movement was pioneered by abstract expressionists such as Marth Rothko, Barnett Newman and Clifford Steele. Now, it is important to mention that Mark Rothko didn't see himself as a pioneer of the style. However, critics relate him to color field and actually talk to him as a pioneer of the style. Now, the term, what does it apply to? So, it applies to artwork that features large areas of flat single hues. Now, the idea is to evoke emotion, ideas, feelings, merely through color. Now, the background and foreground in the painting are one, and the space of the picture is conceived as a field, and it seems to consume both the spectator and the canvas. Now, by the late 1950s, a new generation of color field artists arose, as well as in the early 1960s, and then from then on, uh, there are several artists that have kept working with color fields such as the artist I'm gonna talk to you about. So we're gonna go to our first piece. This is from the artist Sarah Brahman. Its name is here and it is from 2019. Pretty recent. So the artist is recognized for her large scale sculptures. She was born in 1970 in Tonawanda, New York and lives and works in Brooklyn and Massachusetts. So the artist received her BFA from Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and her MFA from Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia. So what the artist wants is to make sculptures to everyday life. So as you can see, they're pretty large scale objects. So even if you're here in a rush of the campus, you're thinking of your everyday life, right? Like what is due, what assignment, essay. But since these are pretty large scale, they invite you to look at them immediately. That is something the artist is looking to do. Now, if you see, there are big circles that are surrounded by metal. And as you look through them, you see a different reality on the other side you see different colors, you see different shapes, and actually one of the most interesting things is that you can also look at your reflection there. So actually, Brahman tries to investigate the sensory experience and the emotional resonance. So what do you feel about reality when you look through the circles? How is the image in front of you distorted or not? How can you play with the reality that is here and the reality that is across the circles? So about the materials, Sarah uses materials from old buildings and antique furniture. Most of them have these translucent volumes of color and light. She really loves to repurpose materials. So the invitation from Sarah is to slow down, turn around, and look. Now, what is reflected back to you? What can you see through this color? So there are gonna be moments of visual confusion, but she also wants you just to feel joy. Joy from the color and from the sculpture itself. So her works are considered minimalists and are into the color field painting. 
Now, I also want to invite you to log in to the Public Art UHS website because they have a wonderful Zoom conversation with the artist where you can deepen into her work. Now, uh, she's also one of the founders of the Artist Run Gallery Canada in New York, and she won the Mount Morgan Prize uh, from the Museum of Fine Arts Boston in 2013. So now, I want to invite you to come with me and take a look at our second artwork. If you are just joining us now, we are on a student-led tour, live on Instagram. Hi, Lisette. Can Hi. you introduce yourself again? Yeah. So I'm Lisette. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm studying my MA in Arts Leadership. I'm on my last semester. Yay. And we're here looking at two beautiful artworks, part of this temporary exhibition brought to you by Public Art UHS. The name of the exhibition is Color Field, and it's going to be here till the end of May. Right now, we are arriving for second piece, which is, by the way, in front of, well, this, uh, this one is actually next to the E. Cullen building, uh, if you're interested to come and see them live. This is our second piece. Uh, its name is Negative Space. It was created in 2019. If you're just logging in, it was the same year that uh, our other piece was created of Sarah Bremen. So this is from the artist uh, Odile Donald Odidam, Negative Space from 2019. Uh, you might be wondering, sorry, someone is passing by. So you might be wondering how tall are these flagpoles? So they're 20 feet long, okay? Now, Odile Donald Audita was born in Angu, Nigeria in 1966. He was raised in the Midwest of the United States and he currently works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's best known for his large scale canvases with kaleidoscopic patterns. So his work is inspired by a sense of dual identity since he was born outside the United States but he came here to live. He wants to combine the, these aspects in his artwork as well. So he wants to combine Western modernity with African culture. Now he speaks about a contrast of cultures and a desire to create something new from those distinct entities. Now, as you can see, these flags are a reflection of the U.S. flag and the Nigerian flag, the colors. So what, does, uh, what do these colors tell you? Like, what do they mean for you? Now, in his particular artwork, the artist also wanted to address the detention of immigrants in the Mexico-U.S. border. And the 13 poles represent the 13 founding American states. So we're actually right now walking across a negative space. So what the artist wants you to think is, do you think walking through this negative space can evoke action towards the positive? Now, he is an abstract painter with color, he explores the possibility of mirroring the complexity of the world as it is. He sees in color an active agent representing the essential power of light. And as you can see, this is a specific pretty day where you can appreciate the light in the color and the shades it creates. Now, for him, colors express thoughts, ideas, and transformational change. He actually mixes his own colors by hand to make sure no color is the same. And he also mixes the colors based on his personal memories. That's why I asked you before, what do these colors evoke for you? What, 
do they mean? Like, are these colors in your flags? So, um, one of the biggest influence for the artist was his dad because he was a historian and he worked with traditional African artifacts. So, he grew up in between them. And uh, that's why in his works, he also wants to express the beauty and the richness of African culture. So, this is pretty much everything. You can take a look at the artwork. Actually, I'm sure you're being able to see beautiful frames. And once more, I want to invite you to come to the exhibition. In a nice day like today, you can walk around. It's gonna be here till the end of May and it is very important for you to know that it's open to everyone, not just for students. So if you want any more information, you can always go to Public Art UHS website and of course keep following them on Instagram. Thank you. Bye, Bye. thank you.